Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are just tuning in, my name is Christabel. When you have finished watching this video, please go and check out all my other videos that I've done on my channel. Anyway, in today's video, I'll be talking about four topics. The gallbladder, the spleen, the abdomen, and the colon. First, we will start with the gallbladder. The gallbladder is a pear-shaped hollow structure located under the liver and on the right side of the abdomen. Its primary function is to store and concentrate bile a yellow-brown digestive enzyme produced by the liver. The gallbladder serves as a reservoir for bile while it's not being used for digestion. The gallbladder's absorbent lining concentrates the stored bile when food enters the small bowel, a hormone called chloecystokinin is released, signaling the gallbladder to contract and secrete bile into the small bowel through the common bowel duct. The bile helps the digestive process by breaking up fats. It, is, it also drains waste products from the liver into the duodenum, a part of the small bowel. An excess of cholesterol, bilirubin, or bile salts can cause gallstones to form. Gallstones are generally small, hard deposits inside the gallbladder that are formed when stored bile crystallizes. A person with gallstones will rarely feel any symptoms until the gallstones reach a certain size or if the gallstone obstructs the bowel ducts. Surgical removal of the gallbladder, lower cystectomy, is the most common way to treat gallstones. To avoid getting gallstones, you should avoid fresh diets, seek out good sources of fibre like raw fruits and vegetables, and avoid eating too much fat. Now onto the spleen. The spleen plays multiple supporting roles in the body. It acts as part of the immune system. Old red blood cells are recycled in the spleen and platelets and white blood cells are stored there. The spleen also helps fight certain kinds of bacteria that cause pneumonia and meningitis. One of the spleen's main jobs is to filter out your blood. It affects the number of red blood cells that carry oxygen throughout your body and the main number of platelets, which are cells that help your blood to clot. It does this by breaking down and removing cells that are abnormal, old or damaged. The spleen also stores red blood cells, platelets and infection white infection fighting white blood cells. Many different conditions can cause the spleen to enlarge, especially diseases that cause blood cells to break down too quickly. When the spleen enlarges, it can't filter blood as efficiently as before. It may accidentally filter out normal red blood cells and platelets, leaving fewer healthy blood cells in your body. An enlargement of the spleen that leads to the destruction of too many blood cells is a condition called hyperspleenism. To take care of your spleen, you should avoid cold foods, avoid sugar and fat, Avoid erratic eating patterns and eat more whole grains and pulses. Now, on to the topic of the abdomen. The abdomen is the body space between the thorax, chest and pelvis. The diaphragm forms the upper surface of the abdomen. The abdomen contains all the digestive organs, including the stomach, small and large intestines, pancreas, liver and gallbladder. The abdomen also contains the kidneys and the spleen. 
Many important blood vessels travel through the abdomen, including the aorta, the figure of vena cava, and dozens of their smaller branches. In front of the fascia are the abdominal muscles and skin. In the rear of the abdomen are the back muscles and spine. Abdominal pain is pain or discomfort that is felt in the part of the trunk below the ribs and above the pelvis. It comes from organs within the abdomen or organs adjacent to the belly. It is caused by inflammation, distension of an organ or by loss of the blood supply to an organ. To prevent this, you should get lots of sleep so your body doesn't get run down, don't eat right before bedtime, wash your hands before eating, drink lots of fluid, especially water, eat fibre rich foods such as fruit and vegetables and don't overeat. Now on to the last topic, the colon. The colon is part of the large intestine, the final part of the digestive system. Its function is to reabsorb fluids and process waste products from the body and prepare for its elimination. The colon consists of four parts, the descending colon, the ascending colon, the transverse colon and the sigmoid colon. colon. The colon is much wider than the small intestine, but it is also much shorter. The small intestine is 22 feet, which equals 6.7 meters long. The colon is only 6 feet, which equals 1.8 meters long. The function of the large intestine is to get rid of food left over after nutrients are, are removed from it, bacteria and other waste. This process is called peristalsis and it can take around 36 hours. First, liquid and salt is removed from the waste as it passes through the colon. Then, the waste makes its way to the sigmoid where it is stored. Once or twice per day, when the body is ready for a bowel movement, the waste is dumped into the rectum. The colon can be prone to inflammation and inflammatory disorders that can be triggered by diet, stress, lifestyle and medications. When the colon is irritated, inflamed, infected, obstructed or impeded, strong contractions may occur. These can cause pain and discomfort. To prevent this, you should eat a variety of fruits and vegetables, drink alcohol in moderation, stop smoking and maintain a healthy weight. Well that's all for this video, thanks for watching everyone and please don't forget to like this video and subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that you can be notified when I upload a new video. Thank you.